One of the key features of Earth's moon is that the same side always faces the Earth. Well, for the most part. If you watch carefully for long enough, what you're going to see is that it varies a bit. The moon wobbles during the course of a month. It's easiest to see if you zoom in on the edge of the moon and you can watch the distance between some feature and the lunar limb change. We call this libration. And now the question is, what causes it? There are a couple of different things that go into that. The most common explanation that you'll hear thrown out is that it's because of how the Earth's gravity, and our oceans in particular, pull on the moon during different times of its orbit. Now, while that does happen, it doesn't really explain what we're seeing with libration. The moon's libration wobbling can tilt the moon almost eight degrees one way or the other. And yeah, Earth's gravity does play a role, but it accounts for less than 0 0.0003 degrees out of that eight degree wobble. So what that means is we are not seeing Earth's gravity change the way that the moon is tilted. So we're not seeing the Earth physically change the position of the moon during the course of its orbit. So what does cause libration? You all know that the Earth's axis is tilted compared to our orbit around the sun. Well, the moon's got the same thing going on. Its axis is tilted compared to its orbit around Earth. And the moon's orbit is tilted compared to our orbit as well. And when you add these two effects up, it means that sometimes we are above the moon and we can peak a little bit past the moon's north pole. And two weeks later, we're going to be a little bit below the moon and we'll be able to peak just a little bit past its south pole. So that's what explains the up and down portion of the wobble. Libration in latitude is the technical term. There's also a side to side component of libration. And this is caused by the fact that the moon does not orbit Earth in a perfect circle. The moon's orbit is ever so slightly elliptical. At certain places in the moon's orbit, it'll be moving faster, and basically the spin won't quite be able to keep up. And again, roughly two weeks later, the story's going to be reversed, and the moon's spin is going to outpace its movement in the orbit. And this is what explains the side-to-side -side wobble in libration. We'll be able to see a little bit around the east or a little bit around the west. Add all of these effects up, and it means that we can see right around 59% of the moon's total surface during the course of a month. This was a lot bigger deal to astronomers in the days before satellites and space travel because we couldn't see the far side of the moon. It was one of the great burning mysteries of humanity. Libration was really the closest we could come to seeing the far side of the moon. The first time we did get to see the far side of the moon was thanks to the Soviet Union's Luna 3 mission, but that wasn't until October 1959. Libration is still a fun thing to watch, and it makes lunar observing more interesting, but also sometimes more challenging because there are certain features along the edge of the moon that when these effects happen, sometimes you can only see them every few months. If you want to watch a libration for yourself, there are a couple of ways to do that. The easiest is to pick a feature relatively near the limb and watch its distance from the edge change over the course of, you know, like a week or more. You can do that with the naked eye, but it'll be tough. So if you try it naked eye, pick a large feature like Mare Crisium. Another way is to take photos of the moon several times during the course of the same month and then try to align those images. Since I try to get images of the full moon every month, weather permitting, I took a bunch of those and I aligned several of these full moon pictures. And what you can see is that the view of the full moon's face is slightly different each month. And that's libration at work. One of the things I've been on a quest for recently is trying to find the Shackleton Crater. Partly because the region around the moon's south pole is where NASA is looking to make the first lunar landing in over 50 years. But also partly because I'm a big fan of Antarctic exploration and Ernest Shackleton. I'm planning to do a quick video about all of that soon, 
But I got to admit, it's been a real challenge because there have been months at a time when the lunar south pole is tilted away from the Earth when the region is receiving its best light. And when it's receiving poor light, it's downright impossible. Anyways, please subscribe to the channel here so you'll know when I finally publish that video on my explorations of the lunar south pole. I hope this video helps you get out and enjoy the moon some more sometime soon. If you have any questions about lunar observing, leave them in the comments. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again next time.